you're posting social media content, is it getting liked? Is it worthy of comments? Is it getting saved on Instagram? And is it getting shared? Because these things really determine the power of your engagement. You either have some or you don't. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Fitness Marketing Mastery, where I share marketing and sales strategies that are easy, enjoyable, even fun, anything but sleazy, salesy, and pushy, so that you can grow your business, not just any time, but let's face it, this is 2021. It's been a rough 13 months, and it may be true of you whether you're thriving because you were ready, you're digital, and you're still delivering programs. Maybe, like me, 40 to 55% more than you were pre COVID, or it's been a tough one because you're not, and you're waiting, you're hoping, you're praying, you're counting on PPP, you're counting on grants to get by until that moment when things change, but they aren't going to change and go back and make whatever worked pre-COVID work again. That day, my friends, is gone. So this post is really about what you can be doing now when it may feel we're in a holding pattern. Maybe if you're in a brick and mortar specifically or just are dying to see people, (laughs) you want that human touch and we all do. And they will be back in some capacity and they'll probably always be using virtual options as well. So shouldn't they be yours? However, today is all about what you can be doing on social media and why no, it's not a waste of time unless you're not getting any engagement. Ironically, a good friend of mine and want a shout out to Teresa uh, De Pascal, whose name I just probably slaughtered, but she is from Capture Social, and you should look her up and be following her, and I'll link to her. She does a course on Instagram, but she's a goldmine of content, and so I feel especially proud at today's podcast because my topic actually coincided with a recent email that I got from her. We're all talking about it because we all know in health and wellness and fitness, we've got to be doing this because we're all using social media or trying to, and not all of us are doing it well. So the point is not just that you're slapping things up there, that you're actually having a conversation with people. You're gaining their trust, their loyalty, and they're leaning on you for support. They want your credibility weighing in on topics that are important to them. That's what this is all about. So I'm going to dive in. I'm going to also put resources in the show notes. Know that I'm in the middle of an April streak. I call it a sprint usually. So I did this in July of 2020 because we were also in a hot moment then, right? We were about four months into a pandemic. Fitness pros needed some turning points and support. And yet now we've never been here either. You may again. This is super timely based on what's ahead for the next three and six and 12 months and what you might be able to do to speed things up just a bit. Shareable fitness content gets you more likes, comments, and of course, shares. But more than that, it gets you more exposure. When the right people, meaning your ideal customer, shares, saves, comments, or likes in descending order of importance, that was, listen again, shares it, saves it, comments, or likes it, you get more love from the platform that you're on. They will say, oh, you're relevant. This audience likes you. We're going to show you to more of them because they will like it too. And we want our users to have a great experience. That's what Instagram's doing. That's what Facebook's doing. And that's what all platforms ultimately will do. But first things first, are you on the right platform? It's always so good to review this. 
If you have right now no audience to speak of, not really many followers, and more of your tribe are on, say, Facebook than Instagram, and you're killing yourself on Instagram, beating your head against the wall, thinking, I'm going to do this, I'm going to grow this, I'm going to beat this, you may be wasting your time. And there's only so much time. You don't have time to waste, right? So the post-creation, the posting, the responding to your comments and the asking questions in that response so that you engage more conversation, that all takes time. You likely have other things to do today. So make sure that you spend, and yes, you need to be there. The time you spend on social media, make sure it's giving back to you. Now, let's talk about shareable fitness content. I'd be willing to bet that you have some posts that underperformed. You thought they were juicy, thought-provoking, and deserved more love, but they got the cold shoulder. Am I right? (laughs) If that's true, don't be afraid to go back to it and repurpose it into one of these ideas I'm about to give you. So let's look at what is shareable. What do people want to share? And I'll answer this in two layers. The kind of content that you use as a vehicle for the message. And then we'll talk about the message. All right. So first of all, what's shareable? People love to share graphics like infographics that illustrate your point. So in pictures and few words, but those words, if you put them there, have to be big enough to read. Images is another one. So literally beautiful pictures, especially, you know, this to be true on Instagram and your text. How many times has this happened to you? A beautiful picture pulls you in. It's a beautiful woman. It's beautiful eyes. It's a face. It's an ocean. And you're like, oh my God, where is that? I want to go to that. It's lavender fields in Ireland. Where is that? And you click on it and it's a kind of a philosophical text message that is true to the brand and the platform, but the image is what pulls you in and you should be doing similarly. Every image you post doesn't have to be a green smoothie. It doesn't have to be you in a fitness outfit doing a fitness pose. You want three or four different pillars, topics you talk about all the time, but you can have a different kind of image that pulls you in. And that image, the way you style your images, are you up close? Is it from a distance? Is it more landscape? Those things should all be a part of your style guide. So if you don't have a style guide, you better get one. All right. So when I post images, some of the things that have been most successful, almost always faces and eyes, most typically mine but I posted a picture of my mother. And let me just tell you, my dog Truman is way more popular than me. So think about pieces of you, pictures of you, pictures of your life and connection to you. Those are really important. But I've also shared series of exercises and I've done them. So people have to scroll. So first one, second one, third one, and then a little description about each, or I've posed a square like the Brady Bunch. Imagine that of images where it's each one is filled with a yoga pose. You could do a checkerboard. Similarly, each, each one is filled, each square is filled, but it's all right there great savable chart. Maybe it's heart openers. Maybe it's things for sitting in a chair all day. You know, it's poses that counter that. Those are really savable. Another thing. So we've got graphics and we've got images and then we've got quotes. So someone famous or you, Let's say you said it in a speech. You can throw yourself in there every once in a while, as long as it resonates with your audience in a way that makes them say, amen. So glad you said that because that's the kind of thing they'll share. If it sounds like you're scolding them, you're preaching them, or you're saying, don't do this, nobody's going to share that. Nobody's going to like that. Why? Because they feel like they just got their hands slapped. You got to raise and praise them. So stand for something, but make sure you're on the same side of the fence 
Azure customer if you're pointing out an enemy. Okay, so what will they share? To elaborate really on where I just came from, it's news. So it's a brand new study. It's something that just came out. They won't shoot the messenger, even if the message is not great. Share a study, a research finding, a statistic. It's shocking. So again, maybe a study, but it could be something in the news. It could be you saying, you know, this thing is shocking and you're talking about that then in the text of the post. So don't ever forget the text of your post is really important. You made them laugh. They'll share that, especially if they think their friends have the same kind of humor as they do. So it's funny. Think about that and make sure it's not just funny to you, it's funny to them. So if you have a quirky sense of humor, make sure somebody else shares it. It's heartwarming. So there's some kind of an emotional tie to it that just is universal. There are certain things we all feel emotion. Sometimes you can relay that in an image and that's enough. Just a hug, right? And at the end of the pandemic, I mean, how many of us are going to, we're so starved for hugs from a lot of people we haven't been able to see ever, maybe, or see for a very long time. It makes them look smart. So people are going to share things that make them look good, not them that make them look bad. So it's where you're telling your people to stop dieting and ditch dieting. You know, that's probably not going to be something that they share because you mean and intend that message for the people who are dieting, right? And the people who are dieting are going to kind of be offended by that. So it's really not getting you anywhere. You want to think twice about the content that you're posting. Okay. And it's practical. So you gave them, say, today's core workout, five exercises that you can do right now in your bedroom in five minutes, right? Or you gave them a series of stretches to use while they're sitting at the desk, or you gave them a recipe right there where there's no clicking to a blog, those things will be shared. Now, you don't always want to do that, but that is a great way to drip out content and get a great following because they'll come back to you again and again if it was yummy, not if it was icky. Okay. Now make it specific. It can't be everybody friendly and you just can't be loved by everybody on the same platform. This is specifically true of Instagram. So if somebody is following you for specific content you're putting out, they're following certain accounts because they post about shoes or they post about hair or maybe about going gray specifically or they post about exercise, fitness, wellness, about competing in bikini and figure competitions. But people are going to follow for that reason. And if you start posting and say you're a big fitness agency and you serve young college men and women, you serve young moms with, you know, kids under five who aren't sleeping, and you serve women who have osteoporosis, women who are going through menopause, you cannot post content that's going to be liked by enough of them consistently. You've got to pick your lane. And you may want multiple accounts. And I know, yes, it's more work, but it's work that pays off as opposed to doing the work that doesn't pay off. There's a difference there. Are you getting me? Okay. So if you want to grow a niche and have a strong following, you're talking to one demographic. If you're a large gym, you have multiple accounts. That would be the smartest. Is it time consuming? Yes. But guess what? The time you're spending talking to no one specifically now is a huge waste of time getting you nowhere. Give your accounts to the trainers or the people who work with a specific demographic They know them. They know them best, and they probably will enjoy the opportunity to contribute with social media. Middle and older women, so lumping that into one group, uh, middle-aged and older women, young moms, and say young men. Those are a great best start if you were going to divide things up. Look at who's your biggest buyers in your organization, your business. Target them first, you know, and then add a second account. Target another, like close second, smart way to grow, but don't try to target everybody. 
in your organization that's from both genders, from, you know, teens to 70 somethings, probably not going to work very well for you. You're never growing and you're never really engaging. So the resources I use to create those posts, the graphics, the infographics, uh, Canva, love that one for graphics, infographics, and for photo editing and picto chart. And I will have to tell you, that's also an infographic creator. You can create handouts on there. And um, sadly, I will let you know, I wanted to shout out to them because I have used them for probably five years, but now Canva keeps getting better and better. You can now create infographics there. You can now create handouts and worksheets there. There's almost nothing you can do. So I really exclusively use Canva and I do have the business account so I can put for both of my brands when I'm talking to you fitness pros and when I'm talking to my flipping 50 members who are women in menopause, I have two brand accounts and two colors and two fonts. And it's so easy to create posts that are brand centric. And that membership fee, let me tell you, is super affordable. I think it's maybe 110, 120 bucks a month, but I use Canva almost daily. So I think you'll love it. And if I had more time, I'd probably go there and play in my free time. (laughs) All right. I've got to tell you this, never steal. And this is important. So I do want to encourage you to go to other accounts, look at them, but plagiarism is plagiarism. Look at somebody else's post, see what's working, see what got them lots of likes if they serve the same audience. If you love it and you share it, take note, do this like research, but what about it did you love, right? And realize that you've just been marketed to in the very best way. It didn't feel like you were marketed to, but you liked it, you shared it, you saved it. You did something. Someone gave you something that you find useful and you want to use again. That's what you're aiming to do. Do that for your tribe and do it for them exclusively. Don't try to spread yourself so thin on one account, loving up all of your people from both genders and from all spectrums of the age groups because you won't really reach or serve any of them. Something that a 60-year-old is going to laugh at, a 20-year-old will not. So make sure that you get it right for your people and really focus and love and nurture the people who are buying. That's your low-hanging fruit. There you have it. Today was a little bit longer than most days of this month, but this is real time. I don't know about you, but I spend at least 30 to 60 minutes on social media, creating posts, making sure I'm interacting after I post those posts. And I actually warm up my audience by posting, loving, and sharing my competitors, my friends, my colleagues of accounts that are similar to my audience before I post. So it's pregame, it's do the game, the posting, and then be there to interact. When people like it, comment on it. You've got to have that interaction. All of those things also boost your engagement. That makes you more shareable because you're more relative. All right. Everything I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show, links will be in the podcast. If this is helpful and you want even more specifics, you want somebody to actually look at your account, look at your website, what's working on it, what's not working on it. You probably want to join me on Thursday, April 22nd, when we have the specialist masterclass talking about opportunities right now, especially if you work with midlife women. But we're also talking about how it can help you get you free publicity, get you in the news, make sure people see and know and hear from you. During this time, people are getting vaccinated, getting more comfortable, coming out, want to see trainers, want to have someone see them and see their technique. It's all in the show notes today. So shareable fitness content, fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash shareable fitness content. And I'll see you tomorrow for another set of sprint podcasts.